Welcome to the Live Installer. Please sit in your seat and feel comfortable. We are going to have a magnificent experience together. Please enjoy this futuristic operating system. Oh, thanks, you live lady. So in this video, I'll be taking a look at the Enlightenment desktop. So Enlightenment dates back to around 1997. So yeah, it's actually quite an old desktop and predates GNOME. But it doesn't really look old fashioned. It really does have a fresh modern feel to it. So the problem with Enlightenment is it's not very well used. Not many distros use it. My option would have been to use Bode Linux. I couldn't. They forked e Enlightenment and used something else now. So I've gone for eLive. It's kind of the next closest thing. I would have gone for Moon OS, not in development anymore. So eLive is a bit behind though on the version number. It uses E17 compared to the E21, which is the current version of Enlightenment. That's not a major version number. It is 0.17 compared to 0.21. I've got an alternate option here where I'm, I've built Enlightenment E20 into an Ubuntu server. But as you'll see, it's really hard to get the Enlightenment desktop going properly. So I've got to apologize for this video. It really is not my best. I've kind of done the best I can with what I have. I simply don't have the time to go into the customizations and really get Enlightenment up and running. That's kind of why I like Bode Linux, because they've done that. We'll start with taking a look at the memory usage. Now, I think that's an invalid figure there. I don't believe it's 566 meg RAM used. I know it's telling me that, but I think an Enlightenment desktop can do a lot better than that. I've seen it be well below 200 meg. So I'm going to take a look at another desktop in a moment. So this is the eLive Enlightenment E17 desktop. In terms of the styling on this desktop, we have a plank at the bottom of the screen with the applications. We've got a desktop selector on the top right hand side and we have an analog clock there on the desktop. You can find more applications by left clicking on the desktop and you have the various categories to go through. But you also have this run everything launcher. It's a text searcher for finding applications on the system. So what have we got for browser? Nope, we've got Firefox, we've got Chrome, Chromium, yes we have Chromium. So I've typed in the name of the application and press enter to launch it. Yep, it's quite nice and responsive there. Resizing the application. Uh, why won't it move down the screen? I've not had that before. So it's literally fixed to that pane. Can't seem to snap to resize anywhere. If I double click on it, oh, it rolls up. So if I want to maximize it, unroll it first, then maximize. Okay, bit of a faff there. Now I know the Enlightenment desktop can do better than this, Here's another look at the Enlightenment desktop. This one I've built from scratch in Ubuntu. Now the trouble with it is there's no easy way to get it up and running. It's not like you can install Lubuntu desktop, for example, and expect the LXDE desktop to be built up nicely and have lots of programs pre-installed. This one, nope, you get the desktop, you have to make it run. No, this one you've got to make it run by adding it into Xinit. So you can see I've got a different view here. We've got a panel at the bottom of the screen. I've got a desktop select. The couple of applications that I have on here. Time, that's a nice view for time. That's volume control and keyboard selector. That's the Enlightenment file manager. Can I move these applications around? See, look, this version is not so restrictive with moving applications around. Strange, I wonder what eLive have done to it. Still got the same behavior on the roll up, but I think that's customizable. So do, do we get anything much with the themes? No, we don't. You have to install these and you have to install them from third party repositories. Wallpapers, nope. Shelves. Shelves are like panels. So you can add another shelf in here. Yeah, let's look at that. Ah, there it is. <laughs> I don't have anything much to put in here though, do I? That was a problem. Ah, shelf contents, so hmm, there's a few things you can put into it. The everything starter, so add that. Nice. Look at the memory usage here. Ah, now that's a bit more realistic, 146 meg RAM used here. So going back to eLive Linux, let's go over to this elementary configuration. Now I'm sure I'm missing something here because there should be way more profiles in here than what I'm seeing. Bode Linux had loads more options here. Had different layouts on the desktop. They also had loads more themes. I think it goes to show the differences some distros can make to a desktop. So what gadgets can I add to here? 
Nothing much more than what I had in the basic system. Let's add that. Does it do anything? Oh yes, it does. There you go. So the module settings. Oh, here's a little extra we can have. Penguins walking around the screen. Hey, it's raining penguins. What else can we have? Ooh, drop shadows. Load that. Nice. Oh, look, they're reading books. <laughs> How cute. I'm embarrassed at this video, though. There, there really is not enough I can show you of the desktop. I'm going to take a look at Bodhi next time around, and we'll see what the difference is from a fully set up. Okay, it's not an Enlightenment desktop. It's a fork of Enlightenment, and you'll see just what can be done. So that was a look at the Enlightenment desktop. Thanks for watching. See you later.